Before the video begins, I just want to say how crazy excited I am to see my Miami Heat team. If, you, if you've been a fan of my channel for a while, you know I'm a Heat fan. I've been a Heat fan for a long time. How crazy it is that we're in the NBA Finals after everything that's gone on this year and also the rebuild that we've had. It's just crazy to see us in the NBA Finals. Anyway, before the video begins, I want you to let me know your predictions down below in the comment section before the NBA Finals begin. Who do you think will win and in how many games? As a Heat fan, I won't try to be biased in this video, but I am very excited to see us go to the NBA Finals. And even if we lost to the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals, I would have thought this year was a massive success. We're here now, and we may as well just try and go all the way like the 2004 Detroit Pistons. But let me know your predictions down below. Let me know in how many games. And if you could help me out by hitting that like button, I'd really appreciate that. Subscribe if you're new for NBA content every single week. And let's get on with the video. So the Miami Heat have officially done it. The fifth seed advancing to the NBA Finals. In one of the most remarkable seasons in league history, one of the most weird seasons in league history, the Miami Heat are advancing to the NBA Finals. This is an underdog team. They don't necessarily have a superstar, but they have two all-stars in Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, and a very, very solid supporting cast that are willing to play their role to win a game, to win a series, and to win, potentially, an NBA championship. It's just overall an incredible story. Jimmy Butler, who's been scrutinized throughout his career with different teams, has finally found a home in Miami. Pat Riley has built this team into a championship team or a finals team in only a matter of a few seasons. They've drafted guys like Bam Adebayo at pick 14, Tyler Hero at pick 13, and got guys like Andre Godala and Jay Crowder in trades. They've acquired Duncan Robinson, and they're a real grit and grind team. Now they're facing off against the Los Angeles Lakers, a team with LeBron King James, Anthony Davis, and what an NBA Finals matchup it will be. These teams have faced off twice this season, but not really this season, because they faced off in 2019 in November. November was a long, long time ago. That is almost a year ago, and a lot has changed since December and November where the Miami Heat faced off against the Lakers. In the first matchup of the season, it was only the second week into the NBA season. The Lakers did get the upper hand back then, but they won by 15 points. Really though, it was only 9 games into the season. Then they faced off against each other just a month later, December 14th of 2019. The Lakers did get the win, but only by 3 points. And now a lot has changed since December of 2019, and we're in September of 2020. Coronavirus has happened. New formations have happened. Dwight Howard's emergence for the Lakers has happened. Can the Miami Heat really defeat the Los Angeles Lakers with Anthony Davis and LeBron James, two stars of the competition, where the Miami Heat don't really have that star player? Sure, they do have Jimmy Butler, and Jimmy Butler is our best player, and Bam Adebayo is an all-star, but you can't compare them to the play of Anthony Davis and LeBron James. They're just a tier above, or two tiers above. LeBron is arguably the greatest player ever, and Anthony Davis is right now probably the best power forward the game has. So, that doesn't mean the Miami Heat can't win this series or can't win a few games, because as an overall team, their team is better. They do give me glimpses of the 2004 Detroit Pistons when they won their NBA championship. Shaq and Kobe were the better duo, obviously as the two stars of the competition, with players like Gary Payton and Karl Malone, in comparison Rondo and Dwight Howard. But overall, the Pistons were just a better team. Billups, Rashid, Rip Hamilton, Ben Wallace. It sort of reminds me of the Miami Heat with Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, Goran Dragic, Andre Iguodala, Jay Crowder, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero, all players that are willing to play their role to help the team win, as the Pistons did when they won their 04 championship. Solid role players that can fit in and play their role to help the team win, they don't rely on the stars. But the overall Miami Heat team, I would say is a better team. They just play better as a team but they don't have the stars like Shaq and Kobe, like LeBron James and Anthony Davis. The thing about the Miami Heat is that you don't know who will step up. You don't know who will win the game for them. It could be Andre Iguodala, as we saw in Game 6 of the Boston Celtics win. It could be Tyler Hero. It could be Goran Dragic. It could be somehow Kendrick Nunn, Duncan Robinson. It doesn't necessarily have to be Bam or Jimmy to win the game for the Miami Heat. 
That is why the Miami Heat actually face off well against the Lakers because the Lakers realistically only have their two main stars in LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And if you are able to match up against them well, you can beat this team. We've seen teams beat the Lakers simply based off matchups alone. And matchups being that they have a power forward that is willing to play on Anthony Davis and play his role against him defensively. And if you have somebody that can guard LeBron James, you can stop this Lakers team because really their role players are good, but they're not great offensively. Sure, Rondo and Dwight Howard have stepped up this postseason, but they're not offensive powerhouses. In fact, they're better on the defensive end, especially somebody like Dwight Howard, a much better defender than he is offensive player. In saying that, they are very good players that the Miami Heat will have to match up against, but they do have a good matchup against the Lakers in Jimmy Butler on LeBron James and Bam Adebayo on Anthony Davis. And we saw what the Miami Heat were able to do to the Bucks. And obviously Giannis and LeBron you can't really compare because LeBron is much better of an outside shooter. But if you don't want Jimmy Butler on LeBron on the defensive end, you've got Andre Iguodala, you've got Jay Crowder, or Jimmy Butler. Three guys who could potentially play LeBron at different stages in the game. And that is tough for LeBron. One great defender on him and then switching it up with another great defender or a third defender. I don't think he's really had to face off against a really good defensive team these NBA playoffs. The Nuggets did have a good defender on him in Grant, but when driving to the hoop, Nikola Jokic isn't a great defensive stopper. He was always in a lot of foul trouble as well. Then against the Houston Rockets, they may have had decent defenders on him immediately, but when he attacks them and goes to the hole, they're running a small ball lineup, which means the paint is wide open for LeBron to finish. And in the opening round, whilst they had Whiteside and Nurkic in the paint, their immediate defender wasn't that good. The Miami Heat have a bit of both. They've got a really good immediate defender in Butler, Crowder, or Andre Godala, and then and then at the rim, you have to get by Bam, which makes it quite tough for any player driving to the hoop, which is the reason Miami has been really good on the defensive end these playoffs and this season. But LeBron is LeBron for a reason, and I'm not saying it will be easy. I mean, a lot has changed with the Lakers lineup. They've got JaVale McGee at center some games, then they run Dwight Howard at center. Who's going to match up against Dwight Howard or JaVale McGee if Bam's on Anthony Davis? There's a lot of questions that need to be decided and need to be figured out. But what I will say is that the Miami Heat defensively always seem to play a very good zone and a very good matchup against whoever they're facing off against. Eric Spolstra is arguably one of the greatest head coaches in the NBA. Nevertheless, the Miami Heat are in the NBA Finals, and I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. He's matched up well against every team they faced off against this postseason. The thing about the Los Angeles Lakers is, what they bring is far different than any other team the Miami Heat has had to face off against this postseason. The Lakers bring a good defensive team that is tall. The Boston Celtics tend to go to a smaller lineup, which actually suits the Miami Heat. Although the Heat have shown that they can face off against a taller lineup as they did beat the Bucks with Brook Lopez and Giannis who are very tall players. Due to Giannis not being able to hit the outside shot like LeBron, it does make the Lakers a little bit more tough. Sure, it will be harder to face off against the Lakers considering that LeBron James is a better offensive player than Giannis. He's able to attack the rim, but he's also able to shoot from the outside. And that is when it gets really, really hard to beat LeBron because he is all around that good of a player. Anthony Davis is still one of the greatest power forwards in the game, if not the greatest power forward in the game, which Bam will have to play his role against him. But a lot can happen. Do I think the Miami Heat though will win the NBA Finals? As a Heat fan, I would love to say yes, and I do believe that anything is possible, but because they're so good offensively and of course defensively, and they are running a tall lineup, it makes it harder for the Miami Heat. But in saying that, I do think it will be seven games. I think the Miami Heat will force it to seven games, and that's because I believe if Miami can stay with the Lakers throughout three quarters, they have the opportunity in that fourth quarter to get somebody hot, whether it's Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, Goran Dragic, Kelly Olynyk, whoever it is, somebody in that fourth can get hot and get the Miami Heat maybe one or two wins in this series, potentially three, and maybe if they're lucky, four wins in this series, but they have to hang with the Lakers throughout three quarters because the Lakers, they don't really have that third option that can really go for 30 points a night. Rondo is good, but he's not gonna go for 30. Dwight is great, but he's not gonna go for 30. He's more of a defensive stopper. Literally, there are so many players on this Miami Heat team that can get hot at any moment, which makes it very exciting to watch and 
very exciting to see what happens to these NBA finals. With that said, let me know what you believe will happen. Let me know what your predictions are in, in how many games as well. It's been your Boarding Smith. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you guys in my next one. I am out. Peace.